Hello everyone, Bruce Robison here from All Saints Brighton Heights with my weekly Vickers video. Uh, looking ahead now to Sunday, December 5th, uh, amazingly, the second Advent Sunday and with lectionary propers for year C in our three-year lectionary cycle. It's really hard to believe that it's December already, even though I guess in so many ways, 2021 as a whole feels like it's taken a decade or two to unwind for us. In any event, we've been uh, uh, seeing at least a dusting of snow here and there the last week or so here in western Pennsylvania. And the temperatures have been dipping down at night, well below freezing. And uh, so there's no question but that the year is turning and coming to an end in its usual way. Uh, Thanksgiving behind us now, and, and I do hope yours was very enjoyable. Uh, uh, all around us now, families are uh, making plans for the holidays. The shopping malls are uh, busy again after the long pause in earlier phases of the COVID pandemic. And certainly here at the Robison House, uh, our traditional Christmas trees and other holiday decorations are uh, gradually uh, settling in. So whether you have a big holiday plan this year or something quieter, I, I do, certainly do I simply share a word of friendship and, and uh, 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 blessing to you as we continue ahead there. So one of the striking characteristics of the new lectionary as we uh, Episcopalians begin to track along with our uh, uh, Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, other ecumenical siblings back in the 1970s with our 1979 Book of Common Prayer. It's the, 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 the central figure of John the Baptist in the Gospel readings for both the second and the third uh, Advent Sundays. Uh, this year, uh, with two continuous readings from Luke chapter 3, uh, uh, this coming Sunday we'll have verses uh, 1 through 6, and then next Sunday verses 7 through 18. Uh, in these uh, uh, two weeks, these two Advent weeks, mid-Advent weeks, I guess we would say, the Old Testament readings center on the words of the prophets as they give voice to the hope in Israel for the coming of God's Messiah, the, the promise that God himself would act to uh, restore new life to his chosen people. Uh, focus uh, now as who we are, on who we are as God's chosen people, and how we should live given this hope. Uh, uh, this week, the Old Testament readings from the prophet Malachi, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4, and then next week we have a passage from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter, chapter 3, verses 14 through 20, if you want to look ahead and follow the prophetic trajectory. It's a nice bridge, I think, in the lectionary this year. The two Sundays have for New Testament readings two passages from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, this week, from the beginning of the letter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11, Paul's address, his opening words to the church at Philippi. And uh, next week, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. I think both of those readings are going to speak well and have a real Advent flavor about uh, what it means to be a people eagerly expecting uh, Jesus' return. Uh, who we are now in the meantime, in this time of waiting, how we live now in eager expectation. In older Anglican prayer book traditions, the second Advent Sunday was framed by the Collect for Holy Scripture that we uh, now have as our Collect on the uh, collect of the day at proper 28, so we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, the collect of the day this week is new for our 1979 Book of Common Prayer. It reflects the emphasis in the lectionary on hearing and receiving and acting in response to what the prophets have said in their inspired words to God's people. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the divine source, the author of what the prophets say, and the Holy Spirit uh, dwelling in us is also why we are able to hear the prophets and to respond to them. So, so the collect is a prayer for the grace of the Holy Spirit, uh, acknowledging that it is only through the generous gift of God that we are able to know the joy of life in Jesus. So we'll pray this prayer at the beginning of our service this Sunday. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, 
Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we begin then with uh, Malachi this week. The Hebrew name Malachi simply means the messenger. And uh, so the, the prophet uh, uh, identifies himself. So he gives voice to the message that God has for his people. Uh, the word is about the advent of the Messiah. And we see that he uh, that uh, he comes, we might say, as a as a force. The Messiah comes as a force for transformation uh, of of God's people. Uh, what he finds as he arrives is a people full of impurities, uh, and his arri his arrival is a is a purification, a dramatic act of purification, a scrubbing inside and out uh, of God's people, accomplishing something they and something that we are unable to do for ourselves, uh, making them, making us through his action, God acting now in a fresh way, making us able to be in right relationship to him and to offer ourselves in a way that is pleasing to him. Uh, hidden uh, here uh, in the prophet's words certainly is Christ at the cross, uh, Christ drawing all to himself. Uh, so a reading, the reading this morning from Malachi. Uh, Behold, I send my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, till they present right offerings to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former times. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we'll hear that, that word from Malachi, the messenger, and uh, we'll respond to it. And we respond to the Old Testament reading uh, this week, uh, 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 pointed in our lectionary, not a psalm as, as we usually have following the Old Testament reading, but instead uh, a New Testament canticle, a canticle taken from St. Luke's Gospel, uh, usually called the Benedictus, uh, uh, which uh, is the first word of the Latin version of the text of this song, this canticle. Uh, in English, in the prayer book, it's called the Song of Zechariah. We're looking forward actually to the gospel reading for today here as Zechariah is the father of the child who would be known as John the Baptist. And uh, Luke, of course, in chapter one, tells the story of Zechariah as one of the temple priests and how one day performing, while he's performing his priestly offering in the temple, an offering that, that uh, an angel comes to him uh, to tell him about the pregnancy, the unexpected pregnancy of his wife Elizabeth, and about how the child to be born is to be one who with a prophetic voice would prepare the way for God's Messiah. And so the, uh, the canticle this morning is the, the song that Zechariah sings uh, when John the Baptist is born. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So the, the, the promise, the, the message of the messenger Malachi, uh, the promise of God's Messiah, of God acting to restore and renew his people, here now is uh, in, in the first chapter of St. Luke and the words of Zechariah uh, uh, announced and spoken into, into uh, the history of the world, into salvation history in a new way as John the Baptist is born to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Uh, now, the, the Christian fellowship at Philippi, as we move on to the second lesson this morning, this bridge, as I say, between the, the Old Testament and the New, uh, the Christian fellowship at Philippi is especially dear to St. Paul. We can hear that really throughout the, throughout the letter, and, and, and we can feel his, his uh, deep affection for, uh, for, for the Philippian Christians. Uh, <clears throat> certainly, uh, especially that sense of affection is very strong here in the section appointed uh, in our reading today from the beginning of chapter 1, beginning at, cha at verse 3. Um, in the larger context, Paul is writing to the Philippian church as their pastor uh, to share some pastoral guidance, we might say, about their life together, which apparently has become somewhat challenged by internal division, by, by strife, by discord. Um, Paul's constant theme in the letter is that the love that we have known in Christ Jesus uh, and Christ Jesus and his tender and self-giving offering for himself, uh, how that in that love, uh, as we know that love in our prayer life and our spiritual life, um, that love will overflow and uh, uh, in us and flow toward one another and become characteristic uh, of the church itself as we uh, root ourselves uh, in the love of Christ, uh, that we as his church would be signs of his living presence as we seek to serve him and to serve one another in a spirit of mercy and compassion and humility. So the prophet Malachi <clears throat> spoke of God's coming as a force of cleansing soap and purifying fire. And for Paul here, that cleansing and purifying force is nothing less than the perfect love of Jesus and its transforming power in our lives. <clears throat> Paul prays at one point that this love would abound more and more for the Philippians, which is a reminder that in this Advent, of eager expectation, the Holy Spirit continues to work in us over time in a process of growth, a process of learning, a process of spiritual formation. <clears throat> so we have a reading again from Philippians chapter 1 verses 3 through 11. <clears throat> Paul writes, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, for you all, making my prayer with joy thankful for your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel thus about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruits of righteousness, which come through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
So across that bridge, that, that uh, uh, word of eager, of how we live in eager expectation, uh, the coming of Jesus, how his love during this interval grows in us more and more. Um, we we uh, come uh, to Luke chapter 2 uh, following this. Uh, Luke chapter 2 will be ready and waiting for us when we get to Christmas Eve as we will hear about the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, about his circumcision on the eighth day, his presentation in the temple on the 40th day. And uh, we'll hear in, cha in chapter 2 about how Joseph and Mary returned to Nazareth in the Galilee, where Jesus spent his childhood, and uh, then also about the, the wonderful story of the time that Joseph and Mary and the other members of their extended family uh, made a pilgrimage with Jesus uh, to Jerusalem. You might remember that story, uh, how Jesus and his family were separated there. Um, uh, uh, the uh, family began the journey home, but uh, unknown to them, Jesus had remained behind to spend some time in the temple. So at any point, uh, uh, Luke turns a, a corner in that story then, uh, as he completes the stories of, of Jesus and his birth and his infancy and his childhood and wants to begin to uh, then move on to uh, the, what we might call the adult ministry of Jesus, uh, the, the long and important, the critical story uh, that would begin with uh, the baptism of Jesus and the Jordan River and then continue through the crucifixion and resurrection and his ascension into heaven. But before all of that, before we begin at the baptism and begin the story of, his, of Jesus and his adult ministry, there is this transitional passage, the first 20 verses of uh, 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 chapter 3 of Luke's gospel. Uh, as we uh, looked forward to this now, as we touched on it a minute ago with the canticle, the Benedictus, uh, remember that just in hearing from the prophet Malachi about the messenger who would come to prepare the way for God's Messiah, we hear in this first part of, of chapter 3 uh, a, a fulfillment of a similar promise uh, from Isaiah the prophet this time, again, to prepare us for uh, what is coming in Jesus. So, so uh, our, the Holy Gospel, again, from uh, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, the third chapter, beginning at the third verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region about the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, beginning to feel a lot, like Advent, we might say. Uh, it's almost hard for me to keep from singing along uh, with uh, uh, the, the wonderful George Frederick Handel uh, Oratorio Messiah as we sing these words, every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill made low, and so on. Uh, the convergence in these, in these words in this moment, the ancient yearning for God's Messiah and our joyful eagerness for the return of Jesus at the end of time. That's the, the, the place we stand in this Advent. It's always a, a special time of year for Christian people, rich and meaningful in so many ways. And, and certainly I will just say, as we 
conclude today uh, and conclude this video um, uh, that uh, if you're able to be with us as we explore the richness of, of worship and Advent at All Saints on Sunday mornings at 1030, we'd love to see you then or wherever you're able to gather with God's people for worship. Uh, as the, the second candle on the Advent wreath is lighted for us, uh, it will be wonderful and is wonderful for all God's people to share this season of prayer and worship, uh, one, one of us with another. Uh, so friends, may, may Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of Christ our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you uh, this holy advent and always. Amen.